Welcome back to Shaw Spotlight. I'm here with Chelsea Sakalatuk, Public Health Dietitian for the Northwestern Health Unit, and today we're talking about nutrition. Chelsea, during COVID, people are finding it harder to eat healthy. What are some tips to staying healthy during COVID and working from home? Thanks, Vicki. Um, yeah, I guess first off, I have to say that we we really need to be kind to ourselves right now. This is uncharted water for all of us. So I think that there's no one perfect diet or there might be days that go really well for you um, with food and other days that don't go well. So that's, and just to know that that's okay and that's very normal, you know? Um, so some, some tips, if you are working from home now, it can be really hard um, because you have exposure to your kitchen all the time, which when you're, if you were in an office or at work previously, you're not used to, to having that. So sometimes, you know, a tactic could be not to set yourself up where it's in, in eye level or where you can see it, because then it's a constant reminder, you know, that, that there is a food available kind of thing. Um, so just depending where you set up your desk. Uh, I also think that like we brush our teeth in the morning, we get dressed to have a routine around food uh, and eating throughout the day. Sometimes uh, if we wait too long and, and we don't eat, what happens? We get hangry and then at five o'clock or whatnot, we realize we haven't eaten enough. So uh, that's when we tend to overeat and eat things that we may not have, have wanted to. So it's really important to, to remember to make that a priority when you're at home, even though it's, it's hard because COVID can be really stressful for people in different ways. And sometimes that will impact what they're eating. So I think how we manage that stress uh, can look really different for people. And one other thing that's really important is if, if you're having cravings for something, you should have it rather than, you know, restricting it. Because when we do that, we tend to want to, to eat much more of it. So, yeah, that's so yeah, <laughs> it really is. Um, and I guess sometimes we mistake our thirst for hunger. So having water throughout the day, like, is, is really important. And, um, as we get older, we lose that ability um, to realize if we have, you know, um, we don't have that thirst sense. So it's even more important if you're older to be drinking water throughout the day. And I must say, we have to celebrate the small wins. So when we drink more water, you know, I always say add things rather than thinking about taking things away. If you, if you like macaroni and cheese, add some vegetables to it. Like try adding stuff rather than taking it away and celebrating those small wins, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. And I love when you said to not be working in your kitchen. Like I'm in my basement, so I have to go upstairs and I could bring snacks down with me, but yeah. I don't. So it's just one extra hurdle to get to food. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. What else was I going to tell you? Oh, I guess, I guess the other thing too is that now that you're in your home, sometimes people call it their safe place. So if there's foods you know that you may not want to have, then don't buy them, you know? So if we have access to them, it's kind of like your safe place. You can have it other places. Um, but if, if you know it's something that when you have a whole bag, like if you have chips and you open them up, you're going to eat the whole bag, then maybe that's something you don't want to buy this particular week or, or whatnot, or eat the chips if that's what feels good to you that week, you know? Um, so yeah, I think we just need to acknowledge to like the times and, and that, um, it's not, your diet's not going to be perfect every day, you know? Well, I think a big reason people are eating now during COVID is because they're probably just emotionally eating. Like everything's changed for, sure. for them. So what does a healthy relationship with food look like? Uh, yeah, that is a really good question. So I don't know if you're aware, but there are three types of hunger that we can have. So the first is actually stomach hunger, which is our, which we need food to fuel our bodies. Second is hunger. So when something 
protein tastes really good and we like the texture of it, even if we're not hungry, we, we eat more. It's just natural to do that. And then the third type is our heart hunger. So emotions, um, you know, when we're hung, when we're happy, we're sad, we're eating emotionally, that is also a type of hunger. So something that we can do uh, is just recognizing what kind of hunger we're having. Like when we sit down to eat, we should eat when we're hungry, you know, and then allow ourselves to eat until we feel satisfied with that. So a healthy relationship with food is really having a relaxed attitude about food and feeling good about it and allowing yourself to sit at the table, um, have food in front of you, choose those foods, and then eat as much as you need to, not what you think you need to or that you think you need to stop. Um, and, and knowing those cues, we lose those as adults, children up to about four or five, they know their hunger fullness cues. But as adults, we, we go with those other types of hunger more often. So I think just recognizing that sometimes people put little notes around, like say on their fridge, am I really hungry? Um, and maybe not. But I think it's also really important to be okay with eating sometimes because you feel happy, sad or bored and just acknowledging that. Um, one thing we talk about a lot is food literacy. It's kind of similar to computer literacy. Like, you know, some people tell me they're computer illiterate. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have the knowledge and skills. And it's the same with food. So you actually have a healthier relationship with food when you, when you have that food literacy piece. So it's having the knowledge to, to shop for foods, like knowing what types of foods you want to buy, reading a recipe, uh, being able to look at a food label and understand what do I want to know about this food, you know? Um, and the other thing that is really important around a healthy relationship with food is not buying in to whatever fad diet is is happening at that time. And there's always new ones popping up. I think that, okay, we're done with this one. That's good news. <laughs> and then something else will come around. And the reason I say that is because um, we know from research that 95% of diets do not work. Um, it's, it's really about looking at your diet long term and not the, the day to day stuff. Yeah, that's so true. Because if you're on a diet, you're just going to keep doing it until the day you don't have to do it anymore. So you didn't really learn something from it because you didn't stick with those changes you made. Yeah. And the more that you have put controls in with your food, the more the relationship with food becomes affected and you're not allowing yourself something the more and with anything really the more we say I can't do this or do that what do we want to do we want to do it right yeah. it's so it's the same with it's the same with food so it should be really flexible and just um individualized because what works for me might not work for you and recognizing that when someone tells you, Oh, I've been doing this or that it's really worked for me. Um, that doesn't mean that that's best for you in your circumstance. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. And during COVID people are online more on social media platforms and feeling isolated. So what can be the consequences of this and how can people cope with this in a healthy way? Yeah, we are really growing up in a digital age right now. And not just um, youth, but adults um, are, are also navigating this world too online. So I think um, it's really important to, to acknowledge that and to realize that it probably has the most impact on you. I think adults think it doesn't have an impact on them, but it actually does. But what's happening is um, youth are at a very, very vulnerable point in their life and they're seeing they're bombarded with and inundated with all of these images of what is betrayed as beauty when they're very unrealistic. There's, you know, um, filters and and all these different apps that can totally change the way you look. And they're comparing themselves to these images all the time where they're not real, you know, 
Um, so I think what we can do for ourselves and for whether it's your kids, your grandkids, is to talk to them about social media platforms and, and the messages they're seeing and, and the images they're seeing because, you know, they're not, a lot of them aren't realistic. So I think just talking to your kids about what they're seeing isn't reality. It's a perception of, um, because they've done a lot of research now with social media and it all um, shows that it has found to be consistently and positively associated with negative body image and self-esteem. So that's really sad. So I think another thing we can do is, is also give ourselves breaks or don't follow an account that doesn't make us feel good. Um, and just, and just having those conversations with our kids, cause this isn't going away. Social media it isn't going away. So I think, um, we need to have these, these strategies in place and we're, we're doing this in schools. We're talking with kids about media literacy, same, same kind of concept as food literacy is teaching them to navigate these things because most often when you when you ask them once they've gotten off social media how do they feel it's not that they feel happier a lot of times so um we need to but then they want to be connected with their friends and peers so it's just a balance you know yeah well i know many parents maybe didn't grow up eating the best either is there any ways that parents can improve what they're eating to get their kids to also eat better? Yeah, it's really harder for adults to change their diets. And that's why uh, most often the, the priority population, like the who we can try and work with most is children because they're easier. Once they form these habits as kids, they're way more likely to keep those into adulthood rather than adults trying to change a behavior that they have. So, um, so I think what I would suggest or say is, is like I said, um, acknowledging um, small changes and successes. So if a family chooses to incorporate, you know, I think letting the kids choose and pick and choose recipes and be involved in all those things is one of the best things we can do for our kids because it's a lost art cooking, um, being in the kitchen just with society has become like such a busy kind of go, go, go world that a lot of times, um, family meals and eating hasn't, it kind of has fallen to the wayside. Well, I know with my friends, she's three kids and, they often just sit on the couch and eat dinner rather than at the dinner table. Right. And that probably has an effect, especially watching TV. It does. So I would even say that to, um, for anyone, like it's best when you eat just to eat. When you have those distractions, you're not listening to your hunger because you're watching TV or whatever. And some of the best conversations you can have with your children is when you're around a table and engaging in that conversation like so many times I have two young kids they're they're telling me things about their day um they're asking me questions so that connection that connection is we need that you know yeah that's and important. it doesn't have to be every day like that may not be feasible for people but at least you know if you can aim for once or twice a week or whatever works for you that's better than than not doing it yeah, that's a good point, making it work yeah. for you. Now, March is also Nutrition Month, so tell me more about that. What's the yeah. theme? So Nutrition Month, um, every year there's a new theme. So this year's theme is that there's no one size fits all for healthy eating. And it's kind of what we've been talking about today, how I think we can't compare ourselves and um, what makes may work for me, may not work for you, and healthy eating looks different. So what's good for me, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily for you work, right? So maybe it's a different dynamic. So the other thing is there's just so much 
myths and misinformation about nutrition that you can find. We call it the decade of nutrition misinformation because anyone can go on, start an account and start talking about their ideas about what nutrition is. So I think it's really important to make sure it's credible where you're getting information from and you want it to be the like evidence based. So where, where is this information coming from? You don't want it to be, you know, not reliable. And uh, what's really cool about this theme is it's a one size fits all approach. It's thinking about what your own culture is. Um, what are your food traditions? I know we all have things that we think of and how ingrained those are and how important they are. And everyone has different health conditions and just life circumstances. So all of those things impact the way that we eat. And what, what's really great about a dietitian is that they can, um, you know, work with you to, to look at all those factors for you and, and really cater to what your needs are. Um, so many times people ask me, um, can you create a meal plan for me? And I say most often that it's not very useful for people because uh, like you want it to be foods that you like and you eat and, and that looks different for everyone. So yeah, you can't just create one plan and give it to everyone. No, no, it, it doesn't work. But they, some people want to be told like this, what do I need to eat? You know, but I need to know what's in your fridge. I need to know what, what you like and what what's important to you and all those things so that's the theme is that you know acknowledging uh all of our individual likes and dislikes and all those um i guess emotional things attached to food too like all those traditions like those are really important pieces food is very emotional um or you know it, it's a connection we have and um, it's really wired in us as humans to find joy in, in eating food. It's a, it's a human reaction to food. So, um, overall food is just wonderful. Yeah. Well, I've learned so much. Thank you so much, Chelsea, for talking to me today and sharing all this great information about nutrition and staying healthy. Thanks so much, Vicki.